Show. Hello. Have you ever noticed how few of us really know when we're well off? The grass on the other side always looks greener. Our story tonight touches on that longing for the greener grass I mentioned a moment ago. And it's told by the man primarily involved. His name is Dick Morgan. And who, at the moment, can't quite believe his own actions. Daddy! Oh, Daddy! I never thought myself capable of striking any child, much less my own tiny kindergarten temptress. Mindy. Mindy. I'm sorry. Honey, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Let me see it. Honey? Mommy! Look at him, please, Mommy. Look at it. What, honey? Couldn't be as bad as that. I just pushed her so she'd go. It couldn't be as bad as that. Let me see now, honey. Oh. Dick, I'm afraid it. You better come over here and look at this. Mommy. Let Daddy see it. No, I won't hurt it, Mindy. I promise I won't. Sweetie, Daddy only wants to help you. He'll be very careful. Please, Mindy, please. Can you wiggle your fingers, Mindy? in some real pain in a few minutes. You want me to bring her over there, or can you make it over here? I'm afraid we can't do either. I may have to be here all night. I won't be able to take any other patients. I'll tell you what. Young Raiden's on at the emergency hospital tonight. I'll phone him and tell him you're on your way, so he'll be all set. Oh, Doc, is that Joe Raiden? Yes. Oh, yeah, I know him. We're in the Navy together. You know what a good doctor he is. Oh, I sure do. Thanks very much, Doctor. Give Mindy an aspirin before you start. Don't worry. Bones mend fast at her age. Thanks very much, Doctor. I'll take a look at her tomorrow. Thanks again. Bye, Doc. After he'd been told not to by his mother. Hey, Mommy. It's all right, honey. It's all right. And just as he was about to nibble on a nice, juicy cabbage leaf, who should he see coming through the gate but Mr. McGregor? Is he coming right over? No, he's on another case. He's had to take her over to the emergency hospital right away. All right. Joe Raiden's there. Oh. Loring said he'd call him. Uh -huh. Just bundle her up in a blanket and I'll go get the car. Oh, he said to give her an aspirin. Dick? Don't feel too bad about it. It was an accident. She knows you didn't mean it. Look, she knows you love her very much. Well, she must think I picked a great way to show it. Oh, look, everything's going to be all right. She understands. She's a lot smarter than we think, you know. Yeah. Ellen? Yeah? Come here a minute. Oh. Yeah, all right. Be right back. 
Okay. Yeah. What are we going to tell them at the hospital? Well, they're bound to ask questions. What are we going to say? I don't know. We, we can't just invent something. Mindy will be there. We just won't tell them anything. But they'll ask. You know, this is an emergency hospital, a police hospital. They have to make reports. Well, I guess we'll just Mommy. let... Just a minute, dear. We'll just let Mindy tell him about it. Yeah. So there we were on the way to the emergency hospital. All during the ride, Mindy wore a baby blanket as though it were a mantle of dignity. She sat stiffly upright on her mother's lap, and her injured hand carefully arranged so that all might see. It seemed to me she was communing darkly with herself, and her silence filled the car with gloom. Suddenly, I found myself gripping the wheel too tightly as my mind turned back to the events which had placed me in such a monstrous situation. That noon, I was having lunch with David Lindsay, one of my best friends, and until recently, one of my co-workers. Our business was insurance. When you get over there, I want to show you the new electric gadget they've put on the garage. It's terrific. You press a button in the car, and the garage doors open. Ah. Hey, what do you got, tennis elbow or something? You can't open a garage door. Not when I can get an electric gadget to do it for me. Thanks. Well, here's to you, Dave. Happiness. You sure got success, boy. Thanks, Dave. Of course, the only thing that bothers me about it is winning out over you. Oh, and I don't feel that way about it. It's like I said before. The best guy won, that's all. You just got more gallop and go than I have. Well, could be. And another thing. You always seem to be there at the right time. Take the fuller deal. Now, you and I both know that's what tipped the scale. Even the boss said so. That's right. But what the boss doesn't know, and you and I do know, you could have been there too, Dick. Uh, what do you mean, I could have been there? Geez, the way I felt that day, I couldn't have faced anybody, much less Fuller. I know, I know. You were too busy licking your wounds over losing the Hendricks account. When you knew there was nothing anyone could do about it anyway. Dick, when are you ever going to learn? Keep going, no matter how you feel, you keep going. Will you stop it, Dave? That old chestnut again? <laughs> okay, okay. Another drink for lunch? Sure, why not? We're celebrating your success. How about a double? Okay, I'll buy that. A oh, waiter, two more. Make it doubles this time. That was bad enough. But late that afternoon, when I was trying to get some extra work done... Morgan? Yes, Mr. Collins? Did those claims get over to the Lewis office by 4.30? Yes, sir, they did. I took care of it, and they're all in order. We should get a follow-up on it in the morning. Good. Oh, by the way, the final papers are ready on the Fuller account. Would you be kind enough to deliver them on your way home? Well, of course I wouldn't mind. But as you know, that's not my account. No, but it's your best friend's account. Wouldn't you like to do him a little favor? At the moment, he's out lining up a new account, and he's got a good chance of making it, too. Oh, good. Well, of course I'd be glad to do it. <clears throat> I just thought that maybe... Oh, but never mind. Uh, I'll see that they get there. Fine. Thanks, Morgan. Be a big help. Now I'm a delivery boy. It had been a particularly irritating day, and I'd been looking forward to getting home to Ellen. She had a clear mind, and I always found it helpful to talk to her about my work. And tonight I had especially wanted to talk to her. But all during dinner, Mindy chatted like a monkey, almost maliciously, seemed to me never once permitting a coherent sentence falling on the air without pounding on it and mauling it to death with stupid questions. Mommy, does that mean Uncle David will be Daddy's boss? Oh, no, dear. Of course Mindy, not. Mindy, please. Mm -mm. Did you know I made a snowball out of cotton today? Of course I did. I saw it. It was absolutely beautiful. Shall I go get it now and look to Daddy? Mm -mm. Ellen, mm -hmm. you know what else Dave said to me today? Daddy, he the said next that Sally time you is... see Uncle David, will you tell him to tell Aunt Sally if she has any more shoes she doesn't want to please give them to me? What's she talking about now? Well, Sally dropped by this afternoon and brought her some high heels to play in. And she's got them on now. Show them to your Daddy, honey. 
Way, well, aren't they beautiful? Mm -hmm. Oh, Dick, did David tell you they have a swimming pool in there? Mommy, now? can we have a swimming pool, too? Now, just a minute. Before we get any ideas of swimming pools, I need a new washing machine, okay, Daddy? But, Daddy, wouldn't you like a swimming pool better than a new washing machine? Yes, honey, I would. But right now, swimming pools are out of the question. Well, you have to forgive her. I'm afraid she's got them on her mind. You see, Sally invited us to come out and swim in her pool any time we wanted to. Oh, well, look, dear, if she wants to go swimming, there's a pool at the high school. It's only oh. two blocks away. Oh, well, goody. Fine. Can we go tomorrow, Mommy? Well, we'll see, honey. You finish your milk now. I think it's almost time for your bath. Be sure and kiss your daddy good night, huh? Yeah, yes, yeah, so good girl. Ready? Now watch those heels. That's the girl. Oh, you look gorgeous. Oh, thanks, honey. I'll wash tonight. You wipe it. Okay. You know what Collins had the nerve to ask me to do tonight? Yeah. He asked me to deliver those Fuller contracts on my way home. Oh. Well, now, bear in mind, I lost the Fuller account today. Yeah. Well, how do you think that made me feel? Oh, honey, I don't think he meant anything by that. Mommy. He's a... You also forgot to read me the Peter Rabbit book. Oh, so I did. Mindy, I... just for once, can't you say your mother forgot to read Peter Rabbit to you? Do you have to say also? It implies a whole history of broken promises. What, Daddy? Uh, nothing. Don't you know it's past your bedtime? Yes, but Mommy promised. Can't you see your Mommy is busy? Yes, but Mommy really promised. Another thing, don't you know that sometimes people like to be alone? No. Very well, young lady, there's no time to learn like the present. Now, you just turn yourself around and march right into bed. Oh, Daddy. Go along? No. Very well, you go to bed this instant. March! Make me. Very <laughs> So there I was, rushing through the night, conscious stricken and beneath contempt, hated by my daughter, and barely tolerated by my wife, conveying the tiny person of my only child to an emergency hospital for the repair of damages wrought upon her by my vengeful frenzy. It was at that moment that Joe Radin popped into my mind's eye. If I remember correctly, he had quite a curiosity Ah, uh, yes, an immense, insatiable curiosity. I could even hear Raiden's voice. Well, well, young lady, tell me how did this happen? My dad didn't. He broke my finger. See? You did this, Morgan? This little child's finger is broken, as you can plainly see. Well, there are laws, you know. It hurts. We'll have to go on the record. I'm under oath, you understand. Well, we'd best get along with it. Were there any witnesses? Mommy was there. Mm hmm. Child's mother. Tell me exactly where this little child was standing when you began to beat her. Then it dawned on me that once that chilling report was reduced to the record, things would be even worse because it was a police record because it was a police hospital then there'd be newspapers Winton insurance man beats daughter fractures finger hysterical child sullen father distraught mother juvenile authorities Richard Morgan you have committed a crime of violence against an innocent and helpless child. There are laws, Richard Morgan, for the protection of children in our free society. Sixty days in the city jail. Sentence suspended pending fuller investigation of the home life of the family. 
Even if I escaped all that, there would still be talk. Hospital attendants, the officer who kept the night records, the officer who read them in the morning. Then there was Raiden's shrewish wife. And heaven only knows how many others would ask Mindy about her bandaged finger and would, God forbid, receive a full report. Oh, yes. I knew it would get around all right. So you hear about Dick Morgan clobbering his own daughter. She's only five years old and the prettiest thing you ever saw. Yeah, that's right. They had to take her to the hospital. Well, I don't know if he was drunk or not. I, I know we had a couple of drinks at lunch. Yeah, I guess you can't watch a fellow like that too close. Maybe he's got a mean streak in him I never saw. Dick. Huh? You, you just passed the hospital. <laughs> Honey, be careful. You just missed that car. All right, all right. It's all right, dear. I'll take her. No, I want Mommy to carry me in. All right, darling. You'll be all right in a few minutes, man. see Dr. Raiden. Dr. Loring called him about us. I'm Dick Morgan. Just a minute. Dr. Raiden, there's a... What's the name? Dick Morgan. Uh, Dick Morgan to see you. I'll be out in a minute. I have a chair. Little girl hurt bad? Huh. Broken finger. Oh, too bad. Dick. Hello, Joe. Dr. Loring phoned me. Come right in here. Come on, dear. Yes, thank you. Just put her right up there. Yes, Doctor. Mrs. Morgan? Oh, I'm yes. sorry, Jill. This is my wife, Helen. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? Uh, Dick, you two just sit over there, please. Come on, dear. Yes. Now then, young lady, what's your name? Mindy. Is this the hand we hurt? Yeah. Oh, such a pretty little hand, too. Does it hurt up here? No. In here? No. How about here? Ow! Oh, it's broken, all right. Believe the hand. Broken. Take him seven years of medical school to teach him that? What do you expect, the hangnail? He might hear you. You want to watch me make this? We're going to make a little splint to fit that finger. Go ahead. Ask the question. You just can't wait to get around to it, can you? Go on. Ask. What? Tell me, Mindy, how did this happen? I fell down and broke it. There wasn't much talking on the way home. Mindy, affected by the pill Joe Raiden had given her, dozed fitfully. Well, so, well, read the finish 
some Peter Rabbit. Yes, I also will reach the finish of Peter Rabbit. I think I'll have a glass of milk, honey. You want some? Uh, no, thank you, dear. Not right now. I felt I disgraced myself, and yet I couldn't understand precisely how or in what respect. Certainly not just because I'd lost my temper, because compared to the problems I had, this was a small thing. Not because I'd struck her, for I hadn't struck her hard, and the damage was purely accidental. No, there was something deeper here. There was some profound moral point that had been made, and I couldn't understand what it was. But clearly, it had been made at my own expense. And then it suddenly dawned on me that through all the torment of the last two hours, I had not been thinking of Mindy, but of myself. Then I began to wonder what kind of man I was. Was this what David meant when he said I was too busy licking my wounds, that I was only thinking of myself? When Mr. Collins asked me to deliver those papers, why was I so offended? Was I again thinking only of myself? Yes, I was. I was a monster of egotism, a moral cripple. Dear, you can go in now and say goodnight to her. Yeah, okay. I think I will have that glass of milk. I'm kind of thirsty. a child's prayer overheard. Dear God, make all the bad people good and make all the good people nice. Well, good night. See you next week.